Hari hari mo. Tomorrow is Diwali, right? Yes. And do you know what happens tomorrow besides Diwali that receiving Ram Chandra back in Ayodhya? What else happens on Diwali? Damodar, Lila. Bengali translation? Okay, I'm sure you will. <laughs> So you want to translate? So this evening I'd like to speak about the Damodar Lila. After I leave Singapore, I'm going to India, and in a few days, I'll be in Vrindavan. And so I'd like to, although you may also, some of you may also be going to Vrindavan for parts of Kartik, but I can take you on a visual visit. Now, what is the meaning of the name Damodar? Damodar Maniki. Damo means ropes. Damo means roshi. And Udara means around his waist or abdomen. Udara means kumar. So Mother Jasoda bound Krishna around the waist and then he became known as Damodar. Mother Jasoda, Bhagavan Krishna, Kumar, Roshi, And here's the Damodar Lila Stan. Complete with motorcycle. <laughs> when Krishna lived in Vrindavan in Goko, uh, Bhavan Krishna, uh, he lived at the palace of Nanda Maharaj. And the Damodar Lila is supposed to have taken place in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. But this particular place is at the base of a hill on top of which is the palace of Nanda Maharaj. And here is the place where the altar is. <coughs> and many of you have seen this image before. This is the stone that is said to be the utkal, or the grinding mortar, upon which, around which Damodar was bound. Okay. So let us begin the Damodar Lila. And the Damodar Lila begins on Diwali day, according to Jiva Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. Mother Jashoda began to consider, why am I hearing all these rumors about my son stealing butter from the storerooms of other homes? <laughs> Bhavan Sri Krishna Nam, 
don't they know that Nanda Maharaj has nine lakhs of cows? We have no shortage of butter. It must be that they don't know how to properly make butter. Today is Diwali. I'll send them all home and they can enjoy with their families the Diwali festival and I'll personally make the butter for Krishna. Has anyone here churned butter before? I'll tell you a little story. Some years ago in New York, we decided to churn butter on Diwali Day. So we got many clay pots and it was very simple. There's a rod that goes in the clay pot and some little wooden paddles. So when you turn the rod back and forth, it would slosh the yogurt back and forth. And we found out that yogurt makes better butter than milk. So you stick the stick inside the clay pot. And you have to have something that holds the rod straight and then the other rope is bound around that churning rod and you go back and forth. Now when Mother Jasoda was making butter, naturally she sang wonderful songs about Krishna. She was on the platform of spontaneous devotion, so she didn't need a songbook. And as she was churning, singing songs about Krishna, she had bangles on her arms. And as she was churning like this, the bangles would hit one another and it sounded like car toast. And the sound of the paddle sloshing inside with the yogurt sounded like a verdanga. She didn't need other musicians. She was a one man band. <laughs> ching, 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 boom, boom, ching, 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 <laughs> ching, 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 <laughs> now, before she began churning the butter, she put Krishna <sighs> to rest. <laughs> Jiva Goswami explains that she had a very special plan for that Diwali day. Out of Nanda Maharaja's 900,000 cows, she selected 10 most special cows. 
নন্দ মহাদেব নয় লক্ষ দাবি থেকে মাত্র আটটা থেকে দশটা দাবি সিলেক্ট করেছিল and she then said with her own hand those 10000 cows very special grass so 10000 gabike 10000 uh with just the dharma is and then she milked those 10000 cows so 10000 gabike ke uh dhun uh yeah okay and then along with more grass she fed some of that milk to another special special 1000 cows <laughs> then she took the milk from that very very special cows and fed to 100 very 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 special cows along with more grass and the milk from those 100 cows was given to 10 very 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 special cows along with grass and she knew which grass to give to which cows to make the most flavored milk. So there she was, churning the yogurt into butter, singing songs about Krishna. Is everything okay? All right. As she was churning, Krishna woke up. And Krishna came, as you see in the painting, indicating to Mother Jasoda that she wanted Mother Jasoda to feed him. Now I'm going to ask our translator to translate what it says here into Bengali. <sighs> Uh, I'm making a special point about this for a reason. Rupa Goswami explains in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that this represents udipan <coughs> or stimulations of ecstatic love for those who are cultivating Vatsalya Rasa. Uh, do you know what Udipan means? Udipan means that which stimulates a particular mood of love according to the perfected devotees like Mother Yashoda. Uh, she 
this meditation is part of the sadhana of those who are practicing raga nuga sadhana bhakti. They meditate on the features of Mother Dasoda, her, her attire, her hair, the flowers in her hair, and all those details. <laughs> Mother Dasoda smiled when she saw little Krishna. She explained, I'm making butter for you. Krishna didn't say anything. He just reached out and grabbed the churning rod, which meant stop. <laughs> He didn't have to say anything, she understood. So Mother Jasoda stopped churning butter. And she placed Krishna on her lap, like mothers will sometimes do. His legs were straddling both of her legs. So he's sitting there looking at her. Her arms are behind his back, and she's staring at his eyes, and he's staring at her eyes, and they're both smiling. Now, this is a classic kind of mother child picture, but this is the transcendental personality of Godhead and the most exalted person in the whole universe, the lover of Krishna as mother. Now look closely at the painting on the right side and you see in the kitchen, there's a stove and the stove has a pot of milk, and the pot of milk is starting to boil over, and she sees it. Mother Soda used her reasoning faculty. Sometimes we have situations in our devotional lives where there's two things that are needed at the same time and you have to choose between one and the other. She reasoned, I better save the milk because if it boils over, then it's spoiled and then I can come back and take care of feeding. Uh, everything in Krishna's pastimes is a conscious entity, a conscious person, including the milk. The milk began to consider, what is the use of my life? <laughs> Krishna will be so satisfied taking milk directly from Mother Jusoda. There's no service for me. Krishna will be so satisfied taking milk directly from Mother Jusoda. There's no service for me. 
Better I just jump in the fire and give up my life. So Mother DeSoto went quickly to the stove. And she's very skilled. She knew exactly what to do. She just sprinkled a few drops of water on the top of the surface of the milk and it subsided. Now, those people that are not experienced like me would try to take the stove, they could cut off the stove and it keep boiling over. But, but you sprinkle something little, little, little on top and it comes down, right? So it was very successful. The milk didn't boil over. Unfortunately, that's not what Krishna wanted. Krishna wanted his mother to feed him. So what did Krishna do? Ogram Vira Mahavishnu. He got angry. <laughs> and when he got angry, he saw the butter pot and said, took a stone and threw the stone at the butter pot and the butter went all over the place. There was more loss of dairy products than the milk that was boiling over on the stove. And as we see in the painting, although the butter and yogurt was all over the floor, Krishna began eating. <laughs> but very quickly, Mother Jasoda came back to feed Krishna. But she didn't see Krishna. She saw a broken pot. <laughs> she saw the piece of rock. And she saw butter and yogurt all over the floor. Again, second time, Mother Jasoda used her reasoning faculty. This must have been the work of Krishna. She didn't see it, but deductively she understood it must be him. And then, as you see in the painting, she saw Krishna's little footprints coated with yogurt and butter walking in the direction of the storeroom. So like a private detective, she followed Krishna's footprints and found Krishna in the storeroom. She quietly looked around the corner and saw there was Krishna. He was very busy eating butter and feeding butter to the monkeys. <laughs> Now, I like this painting very much. <laughs> Have you ever seen a monkey saying please and sticking his hand out like this? 
That's not what monkeys do. <laughs> but the artist has a good imagination. <laughs> and as you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of very beautiful paintings of the scene of Krishna's makan chore, stealing butter and feeding the monkeys. And Krishna's eyes were looking this way and that way while he's eating butter and feeding the monkeys. <laughs> very scared, very much afraid. Mother Jasoda may come and find me. <laughs> he who gives fearlessness to all who take shelter of him is afraid of Mother Jasoda. <laughs> When she approached him, Krishna got up and ran. Now we know from Ishopanishad that Krishna can overcome all others running. Kalyavana, a great powerful warrior, chased after Krishna but couldn't catch Krishna. He was reaching out and Krishna was just beyond his reach, a couple inches beyond his reach. So Kalyavana ran faster and Krishna ran faster. And he couldn't catch Krishna. But we know from our Damadarastakam prayers, Krishna allowed Mother Jasoda to catch him from behind. And you see in her left hand, in this painting over here, she's holding a little stick. Not a stick that's used for cows and is kind of thick and heavy. It's a little, it's a lati, it's a little skinny little stick. And seeing the stick, in Mother Jasoda's hands, he began to cry and cry, so she threw away the stick. She didn't want to make him cry. And she scolded him. I'm your mother, and it's my duty to discipline you. And I don't mind if you're giving butter to the monkeys, you can be generous. Nanda Maharaj has so much milk and butter. But I can't look the other way when you're stealing, because if you grow up and you continue to steal, then you'll be spoiled. So I have to discipline you. So a standard discipline at that time for small children that were naughty is they would be tied up with a rope around their waist. We know what happened. While she was trying to bind Krishna with rope, it was two fingers too short. So for the third time, Mother Jasoda is using her reasoning faculty. <laughs> She took two ropes and tied the two ropes together 
that should go around Krishna's waist, but it was again two inches too short. She got many ropes, hundreds of feet of rope that wouldn't go around Krishna's waist, and again, two inches too short. But reality is, who can bind Krishna with ropes? Now, Jiva Goswami explains the reason why the rope wouldn't go around Krishna's waist. Krishna didn't want to, to, to be bound by Mother Jasoda's rope. He wanted to go back in the storeroom and take some more butter. <laughs> so Krishna exhibited his Satya Sankalpa Shakti, which means his own potency, his willing potency. Satya Sankalpa Shakti. Did you say it? I didn't hear you say it. Satya Sankalpa Shakti. Satya Sankalpa Shakti. You don't have to translate that into Bengali. That's Sanskrit. Satya Sankalpa Shakti. Satya Sankalpa Shakti. That means Sankalpa means his wish or his desire. And Shakti means his potency of Sankalpa. Okay. I'll say it differently. So maybe you get it differently. Whatever Krishna wants, that's it. It happens. That's just such a sankalpa shakti. Now, there's a second potency that Krishna was exhibiting. The second, the and that's his vibhuti shakti. What does vibhuti mean? Just like chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita is Vibhuti Yoga. So it's his opulence. And what can overpower Krishna's opulence? Nothing. Because Krishna was exhibiting these two potencies, Mother Dasoda's rope wouldn't go around him. By this time, there were some other elder ladies who had gathered around and were watching what Mother Dasoda was trying to do, and they just laughed at her. They said, look at all this rope that you have. And it's not going around Krishna's waist. So just accept it's not meant to happen. <laughs> and Mother DeSoto laughed. And she said, This is a very strange event. I have 150 feet of rope that doesn't go around the waist of my son, but it's the size of a fist. <laughs> Uh, 
And the rope isn't getting any shorter. And his, his waist is not getting any bigger, but it still doesn't go around. Very unusual. And here's a second unusual thing. It's always two inches. And she started laughing along with her friends. <coughs> but she has very special motherly affection. She continued to try, even got all the rope from all the storerooms of all the families in Braja, and it still was two inches too short. <laughs> Now, how much rope is that? Because they're, they're cow herds. They, they take care of cows. They have rope and more rope and rope. Two inches too short. <laughs> When Krishna saw the devoted effort of Mother Jasoda, his mood shifted. Krishna is the king of all his potencies. But amongst all of his potencies, his kindness, his karuna shakti, is superlative. <laughs> so what Krishna did was he withdrew those two potencies that were preventing Mother Dasoda from binding him. And instead he extended his Kripa Shakti. Is it clear? Yes. Satya Sankalpa Shakti and Vibhuti Shakti were withdrawn. And he exhibited his Kripa Shakti, now she could bind him. So Jiva Goswami explains there are two necessities. One was the effort, the devoted effort of Mother Jasoda. No. Mother Jasoda's effort, Parishrama. And Krishna's mercy. These two are what's necessary. And that's the two inches. It's a, it's an, it's a nice, easy way to remember the, the requirement for success in devotional service is these two things, your effort and Krishna's mercy. This required her her motherly affection or bhakti nishta. And that connected with Krishna's Kripa Shakti. And this way, Mother Dasoda was able to bind Krishna. There's many wonderful paintings of this Leela. You've seen many, many, I'm sure. Here's a very nice one. Now I have a question for you. Why don't we call this Leela Yasoda Damodar? 
But some often we say Radha Damodar, not Yasoda Damodar. So question, is there a pastime where Radharani binds Krishna around the waist, Damodar? Yes, there's a nice Leela and I'm going to share it with you. There are three places where this Leela is nicely described. One place is found in Jiva Goswami's Preeti Sandarbha. He makes reference to a particular passage from Bhavishya Purana. He first describes the character of Radharani's love for Krishna. She has a sense of possessiveness about her relationship with Krishna. One evening on Diwali day, Krishna was to meet with Radharani, but he was late. He was late because at Nanda Maharaja's home, there was a Diwali festival. And Krishna was taking part in the family festival. After that festival, he came to meet Radharani, who was now angry with him. So she had a cloth around her waist. She removed the cloth around her waist and tied up Krishna around his waist. Krishna requested Radharani, please forgive me, but there was a festival and I was delayed because of the festival and her anger became subsided and she unbound Krishna from the, that rope around his waist. In another of Jiva Goswami's writings, he makes reference to the same situation. And it's from Sri Radha Krishnarchana Deepika. Can you read it? Sri Radha Krishna Archana Deepika. Good. <laughs> so in this case, Jiva Goswami writes that Purnamasi, Yogamaya personified Purnamasi, was overseeing this festival at Nanda Maharaja's home. Nanda Maharaja Parite. After Radharani became angry with him because he was late and bound Krishna with her rope or her, the sash around her waist, Krishna explained to Radharani why he was late and she left her anger to the side and released Krishna from being bound. Krishna then said to Radharani, I am very satisfied and pleased with you for binding me with your intense love for me. From this day forward, my name of Damodar will be celebrated and most famous. 
I, Krishna speaking, I will hold this name more dear to me than any of the other names by which I am known. One will be able to stay eternally in my abode who calls upon this name. Now, for a whole month, we were seeing the Damodar Astakam. And Krishna gave his blessing to Radharani, the destination of those who call his name like this. Krishna concluded with the following explanation. In the future, Mother Jasoda will bind me to the grinding mortar like this. And one who observes that festival will have the fulfillment of all desires. And Krishnadas Kaviraj also writes about this Radha binding Krishna. He writes about it in Krishna Karnamrita. This is the, the source is the same Purana, Bhavishya Purana. And um, when Krishna was released by Radharani after binding him, Krishna was very ecstatic in that loving exchange between Radha and him. The one more, Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur narrates this pastime where Radha binds Krishna with a ribbon from her hair. It's very difficult to get a close photograph of Radha Damodar, the deity that Jiva Goswami worshipped, that was carved by Rupa Goswami's own hand. But here's a nice photograph. These deities are now worshipped in Jaipur. But we've often heard Rupa Goswami personally carved them eight inches tall. And the marble for the deity came from a mountain in South India, Mount Parvat. And here's another photograph of the same Radha Damodar deity. Today, when you go to Vrindavan, the Pratibhu or replacement deities are to be seen. And during Srila Prabhupada's time, Radha Damodar were being worshipped by one sannyasi, celebrated sannyasi, Vishnu Jan Swami. Vishnu Jan Swami, and when that Radha Damodar bus party concluded, the deities are now being worshipped in the farm project Itanagari. So there's some memories and some glorification of the Damodar Lila.
It's such an important festival that for, for a whole month. We sing the Dhammadarastakam prayer and offer a lamp to Dhammadar. So I think that's what we're going to do next. Have you already offered your lamps? Not yet. So if you allow me, I'm going to offer a lamp to Dhammadar. And someone that likes to sing the Dhammadar Astaka song can begin. I'm 